Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushua, Bashem, Kakadash. Yahweh being the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Ha the Sham name, Yahushua, being the name of the begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, or Kakadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the Apostle, out of His great most noble wealth. Peace and blessings unto the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all, back in the window, let's do a sprint of power. Beyond Bashem, Shalom, when the video is edifying. Okay, and this is the lesson right here, going into how the elect are not going to be offended in Yahweh Bashem El Shai. And what I mean by that is the elect are not going to be offended, okay, or their feelings are not going to get hurt towards serving the Lord to the point where, you know, it makes them resentful and bitter against the Lord. You know, they're just going to roll with the punches, so to speak, and take the trials, the tribulations, take everything, the rebuke, the correction, you know the setbacks okay take all of that you know as things that come to, you know with the game so to speak for lack of better words and take it cheerfully and endure through all that you know even though they might get cut to the heart every now and then you know but at the end of the day they're not going to be offended okay because they're going to understand that you know the lord really loves those like uh whom he chastens man so part of that chastisement is when you get rebuked man whether it be by correction, you know, brother, get on you, you get corrected, you know, you get exposed and it hurts your feelings or the Lord judges you in a certain type of way. OK. Or you might get embarrassed, you know, because of uh, some type of, uh, you know, correction or reproof that came upon you. But ultimately, you know, you're going to be willing to uh, look past that. OK, because you understand the bigger picture and that you understand that this is number one, not about you. Okay, it's about the Lord first and foremost. So it's not necessarily about how you feel. Okay, it's about how Yahweh Bashmashai feels and what's pleasing unto him. You know? Uh look at what happened with um look at what happened with Abraham when the Lord commissioned him to sacrifice his uh son Isaac, whom the heir of the promise was given, right? Or the covenant of promise was given to. So that's pretty much like Abraham's only heir, even though he had other sons. Okay, and the Lord told him to slay uh, slay Isaac, man. Okay, and Abraham he did that faithfully. You know he endured to the end. He didn't get offended at the Lord and what the Lord requested at. Okay, and he didn't uh, and he did it the way that the Lord required him to do it. Even though he didn't necessarily sacrifice Isaac, but he was willing to do so, man. Okay, and the Lord made him withdraw his hand because he he proved his faith, man. So it's the same thing now in these times. Our faith is being uh, uh, proven, okay? And a part of our faith being proven, we got to come the right way, you know, when we come to serve the Lord. We can't just serve the Lord any type of way. So when we get corrected, you know, we can't get discouraged in that, man. We can't get offended. As scriptures say, uh, be not faint-hearted, okay, when you're rebuked of him, you know? This is uh, Matthew 11 and 6. It says, and blessed is he. Whosoever shall not be offended in me, man. Okay, so if you're not offended in Yahweh Bashmel Shai, consider yourself blessed. If you're not offended with the things that come with this truth, consider yourself blessed, man. Okay, because you know, in this truth, you have to have thick skin, especially when it comes to uh, correction. Okay, you can't get emotional when a brother corrects you. You know, yeah, it might be embarrassing, but really, you know, it's a perception also. Okay, because, you know, you getting corrected can kind of seem embarrassing. But at the same time, it's like, well, hey, this is a learning moment. You know, none of us are perfect anyways. So what's the point of, uh, you know, being, feeling embarrassed? You know, that's just most of the time our ego wanting to, uh, you know, look the par. Okay. And, you know, and when you see it that way, man, when you look at it, you should really appreciate when you have people around you to correct you because that means those people who are, who are around you actually love you man okay like it says in um it says in uh proverbs 27 and 5 it says open rebuke is better than secret love right so people who rebuke you openly okay they love you more than someone who loves you in the dark so to speak someone who loves you secretly okay it says faithful are the wounds of a friend right you know because when you get corrected or when you get rebuked, it's like you're getting wounded, you know, on a uh, figurative sense. 
okay? You know, because it hurts sometimes. You might feel that guilt. You might feel that embarrassment, that shame, you know, things that hurt you, uh, you know, as far as like feelings wise, you know, mentally, okay? It wounds your mind. It strikes at your mind. It gives you a mental blow, right? But really, the scriptures say, uh, he, that he that have understanding will not grudge when he is reformed, roughly paraphrasing. So if you're a man of understanding, if you're a wise man, if you're a righteous man, you're not gonna hold a grudge against someone when they correct you, okay? Because that's not, that's not being wise. This person is really helping you. How are you gonna hold a grudge against them? Okay, so it says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful, man. Yeah. Okay. You know, someone who, someone who's uh, always being a yes man, someone who's always approving of everything you say, someone who, you know, never tries to correct you or anything like that, you know, really always tries to sweet talk you, you know, that's like more than likely an enemy, man. Okay. Because that's what enemies do. You know, enemies are, have to be deceptive. So, you know, when they're far, they appear near. And when they're near there they appear far you know as a, you know as a little quote and also you know when they really hate you they hide their intentions and make it seem like they like you that's like Esau eat them all right that's the spirit of the devil you know Judas Iscariot came in the same spirit he had a spirit of Edomite for doing something like that to our Lord Yahweh Shai okay but nonetheless the point being what a person who uh who uh wounds you faithfully okay you know that's that's better that's more loving okay this is uh also uh psalms 141 and verse 5 let the righteous smite me all right so the righteous you know the, the ones who are standing up for the truth of the Shai, the ones who are rebuking and reproving your righteousness let them smite me you know as the scriptures say which means what smiting meaning to correct okay because the smite really means to strike at if you smite someone all right it means to strike at, okay? So it says, let the righteous smite me. So let them strike at me with correction, okay? It says, it shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities, man, right? Okay, so, you know, it has an excellent oil. It has, a, it has an anointing, you know, when a brother uh, smites you or a brother corrects you. It's because he's like, a, it's like almost like he's anointing you, man. You know, with knowledge and understanding, okay, and correction, man, so that you, your ways may be, uh, you know, profitable from the reproof, okay. And actually, when you go into that uh, etymology of the word "offended," okay, from uh, etymology online, the, the etymology and the definition of the word "offended," it says early 14th century offending to disobey or sin against. It says a person, human or divine, all right. Uh, that's that's one way of putting it. It says, Old French, offendre, hit, attack, injure, sin against, antagonize, excite to anger. Okay? You know, and it says, and directly from Latin, offendere, to hit, thrust, or strike against. Okay? That's the point. Figuratively, to stumble, commit a fault displease trespass against provoke okay and that's what happens when you get corrected sometimes your feelings your emotions get provoked your mind gets provoked because you're like oh i got corrected your automatic response is to want to defend yourself just like how if you get hit your automatic response is to probably flinch or cover up okay or want to hit back okay because you're being striked at man so in a figurative sense when you get offended at something it's like you're figure it's like you're figuratively getting striked at man okay and that's why a lot of times when dudes get corrected they get emotional because when people get into a fight when people get hit or people get striked at they get emotional okay and it's understanding don't get me wrong but those are the best times to maintain your cool you know because if you're in a fight and you're just flabbergasted because of emotions you cannot uh, think process uh, and process information you know efficiently okay so it's the same thing when you get corrected and you get nervous. You're not going to, you know, uh, take the correction efficiently, okay? You're going to be nervous at the fact that you just got corrected. So your mind is thinking, okay, I need to defend myself. But instead, you know, just take the correction instead. Just listen. 
know, and, and, and receive it, okay? Because a lot of people, when they get corrected, the first thing they want to do is justify why they did what they did. But the thing is, you still did it, and, and it was wrong, okay? Yeah, you might have a justification or a reason or an excuse as to why you did it, but it's like, you still did it. So, you have to hold yourself accountable, man, okay? That's why it says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, because a friend who holds you accountable, a friend who corrects you, from your mistakes, that's a faithful friend right there, man. Okay, Songs of Solomon uh, 5 and 7, this is the watchman that went about the city, found me, okay, and that's what happens. You know, the watchmen, the men of Yahweh Shemeshach who are going about the city, who are out on the highways and byways, okay, they're, 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 they're fishing for the elect. They're finding out the elect, man. Okay, and it says, they smote me, all right? They wounded me, you see? They smote me, they wounded me. Meaning what? That they figuratively offended, all right, potential members of the elect. But when I say offend, I'm saying more so in the fact of that they they, they uh, strike at them, figuratively speaking, with the word, all right? Because this word is like a sword. You know, a lot of times when Yahusha or other men of the Lord went on the scene and they were cursing our people out, it says how they were cut to the heart, meaning that they were, sh they were cut or they were smitten in their mind, in their heart, okay? The Hebrew word for heart, lob, all right, or mind, okay? Cut to the heart or prick to the heart, man, see? But Yahweh says, blessed is he who is not offended in me. So meaning, you know, you get corrected and you don't get offended by it to the point where you get all emotional and you don't want to deal with the Lord anymore, okay? Because when you get in this truth, there are things that are gonna like, you know, work your emotions, man, or work your mind, or make you be like, damn, like, oh shit, you know, the Lord don't play, you know, but you can't get offended at that, you can't get emotional, like what happened with uh, Uzzah, when he tried to grab the Ark of the Covenant, and the Lord put him to death, you know, right then and there, King David, it said it displeased, you know, King David, because the Lord uh, killed Uzzah, all right, but the thing is, the Lord, I mean, King David didn't get offended to the point where he wasn't going to serve the Lord anymore, you know, Uzzah died, and, he, and it, 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 it played a toll on David's mind, you know, but he still was like, hey, I'm still going to serve the Lord, okay? If anything, that made him fear even more, you know, because he was like, how can this Ark of the Covenant abide with me, you know, if, if the Lord putting people to death for touching it, you know what I'm saying? So if anything, you know, making David fear the Lord even more, man. He didn't get offended to the point where he's like, oh, I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore because he killed Uzzah. So I was just trying to hold up the Ark of the Covenant. No, the Most High wasn't playing that, you know. Okay, and 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 the, and the new, or I, or I want, I don't necessarily want to say new, but the metaphorical Ark of the Covenant now, the spiritual Ark of the Covenant now is our Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, He's that mediator. He's that mercy seat. Okay, and if you uh pretty much are offended against Him, you know you're gonna get sh sh smitten down like Uzzah, figuratively speaking, man. Okay, you're gonna get cut. You know, if you don't take heed to Yahweh Shah, you're gonna get cut off, man. If you're offended to Yahweh Shah, you're gonna get cut off, man. Okay, so it says the the watchman that went about the city found me. All right, the brothers out on the highways and byways, the prophets who are on the highways and byways. Okay, who are out and about. It says they smote me. Okay, they smote me, meaning they smit they smitten you with the word. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls, all right, the walls, watchmen upon the walls, the towers, the keepers of the walls took away my veil from me, okay? Meaning they took away your cloak for your sins because now you've been warned, now you've been now you've been corrected, you've been held accountable. So now you can't say, oh, I didn't know, all right, because the correction went out. That veil got taken away from you, okay? And that's the problem with a lot of people. They get offended in Yahweh Shemeshah because that veil gets taken away from them when the Lord corrects them from their sin. That's what I just see in John the third chapter. Let me get it. All right, John chapter three. A lot of these people they're not gonna they're not gonna come into the faith because really they love darkness, man. All right, John chapter three, and uh, go straight to the point, Lord willing. This is a uh, John chapter three verse eighteen. It says, "He that believeth on him is not condemned." But he that believe it not is condemned already. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. 
And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, man. That's what it is. So people love this world more than they love the Lord. So they're offended at that. They're offended at the Lord because the Lord is taking away their worldly veil from them. So now they can't say that they knew but uh, that they don't know better, man. Okay, but now they're showing their hand pretty much. They're showing that they're offended. They're being exposed. You know, that those who are approved may be made manifest among us, man. That's the scripture you see. So you got people who are now offended, even though they know the ways of righteousness, they get offended at that. And now they're showing their hand like, okay, well, I'd rather be wicked, you know, and because they could, because they continue in their wickedness. That's them showing their hand pretty much, even though they know the right way. So they're offended at the Lord. Okay. It says, uh, for everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light. Right. So if you if you're doing evil, that means you you're, you're choosing darkness and wickedness over light. You hate the light. It says, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Right. So you're not going to come into this light of Yahweh Shemashai. You're not going to come into the glorious honor it is to be a servant of the Lord until your deeds be getting reproved and you you come into the light. If you want to come into the light, your deeds have to be made manifest and exposed and corrected. That's why the Lord said he's putting candles upon Jerusalem, man. Okay? Meaning that he's going to shed a light on everyone's works. Everyone's works is going to be made manifest and reproved. Also, Judas the eighth chapter, when you go into it, okay, it talks about how, you know, um, you know, the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them, man. Judith chapter 8, starting at uh, verse 25. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord, Yahweh, our power, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Right. So just like how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all tried in their own particular walk. Remember, we brought up through the spirit earlier about uh, Abraham sacrificing Isaac. Okay. That was a trial for them both, really. Because Isaac was about to almost give up the ghost. He was about to lose his own life. And Abraham had to sacrifice his own son. You know, I'm sure that might have potentially, you know, took a little mental toll on his mind, you know, in the flesh. But he 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 followed after the spirit, though. That's the difference. So he wasn't necessarily offended. Okay. It says, remember what things he did to Abraham and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob and Mesopotamia of Syria when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. Right. Our forefather Jacob, he caught hell. You know he suffered as a as a as a as a, as a well doer, you know. But he wasn't offended, man. He still stayed uh, stayed following the righteousness of the Lord. Okay. It says, "For ye have not tried us in the fire, as he did them, for an examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them, man. That's what it is. So." When the Lord strikes at you with correction, that's him scourging you, all right? When you try to come near unto the Lord, when you want to get a closer relationship with the Lord, you have to sanctify yourself, man, and we have to sanctify ourselves in the spirit. So your light, the Lord's light will be shined upon you, and that darkness that you have within you has to be corrected, that it may be filled with light, okay? Going back to Matthew 11 and 6, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Psalms 119 and 165, great peace have they which love thy law all right so if you love the scriptures okay then guess what you're gonna have peace man because you're gonna take heed to it it says and nothing shall offend them man yeah nothing is gonna offend the lord's elect man and scripture say what shall who shall separate us from the love of yahweh you know nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of the lord okay this is uh matthew 5 and 29 it says and if that right eye offend thee Pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell, meaning the grave. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay, meaning what? That, you know, if you're doing something or you have something hindering you, all right, in your walk, Okay, and it's pretty much offending your walk with the Lord. You have to be willing to cut that off. Blessed is he who is not offended in me, man. So let's say, you know, you could do X, Y, and Z. All right, but you have just this one thing in the Lord that's hindering your walk and you're not willing to cut it off. You're not willing to trim it or give it up completely, you know, because 
because of what? You know, it's offending your walk with Yahweh Shemashai. So now you're like, well, if you're choosing that over the Lord, then you're offended in the Lord, man. All right, because the Lord requires you to sacrifice certain things, man. And if you're not okay with those sacrifices or willing to give those things up, you're offended in the Lord, like the young rich ruler who had many possessions. You know, he said he kept the law, stages, commandments, he, you know, this, that, and the third, right? And then Yahweh said, if you will be perfect, uh, uh, give up, sell, you, sell all your goods and follow after me, man. And right? it said, what? He went away sorrowful because he had many riches. So he was offended at that. He wasn't willing to sacrifice that. Okay? Because that's where his trust was, his riches. So he was offended in Yahweh shot. He wasn't willing to cut off his right hand. Okay? And guess what, man? Riches, money can't save you, man. Nothing else can save you but your Yahweh Shemel shot. Okay? So when the Lord requires things of you, you know, don't be offended. Speaking to myself first and foremost, man. All right, and don't be offended when the judgment goes out either. You know, I want to mention that too through the spirit, man. When the Lord starts to judge certain people you might know, all right, and things like that, man. Hey, you can't be a respecter of persons. Of course, you might you might mourn for them. You might not, you might not. But hey, depending on what the Lord also tells you to do too, because the Lord could mark somebody and tell you not to mourn for them, like He did with Ezekiel, and that's another trial. But Ezekiel wasn't offended in that. Okay, and the Lord killed Ezekiel's wife. Okay, <laughs> and he told him not even to mourn about it, man. That's hard right there. That's bitter, I'm sure. Okay, but yet, did Ezekiel still go out and serve the Lord? He absolutely did. So I'm going to show you what, he wasn't offended. Okay, neither can we be. All right, this is uh, Matthew 13 and 20. It says, but he that, have, he, he that received the st seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath no root in himself. That's what it is. You're supposed to be rooted in the faith, as the scriptures say. Rooted and built up in him. Okay? Yet hath he not root in himself. So he's not grounded in his truth, man. You know, he he's pluckable. Okay? He's not like firm in his truth. Like no matter what, he's not going to leave this truth. Being rooted. Okay? That's why the scriptures say we're supposed to be unmovable. You know, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. All right? And it says, Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Yeah, so anything, you know, to cut him or strike at his heart or to get his emotions riled up because of the word's sake, suffering for the word's sake, he's offended at the Lord now. Now he doesn't want to be a Hebrew Israelite anymore. <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many people go out like that, man. And that's why the scriptures say how wisdom is unpleasant to the unlearned. Sirach Ecclesiastes 6 and 20. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. Talking about wisdom. Because if you're unlearned in this truth, this truth can come off, you know, uh, rude or offensive to you, man. Or unpleasant. But that's because you're simply unlearned. Like scriptures say, though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, man. Okay. It's uh, Sirach, and Yahweh Shai was rude in speech, man. You know? But yet, and there was people who were offended at the stuff that Yahweh Shai said, but Yahweh Shai didn't care. All right? All he cared about was what? Doing the will of his father, man. All right? You know, and everything that came with it. Okay? Including correcting the body, correcting the church. And that's what our mindset has to be too, man. We can't just be, oh, my feelings got hurt. You know, <laughs> the Lord doesn't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course the Lord cares about our feelings, but certain things is just like, you gotta know when to put your feelings on the back burner, man, when it comes to the Lord. All right? And it says, um, she will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial and he will cast him and he will cast her from him or it be long. Right. That's a lot of people when they come in this truth. This truth tries you. It weighs you down like a mighty stone of trial. But you got a lot of people who come into this truth, man. All right. And they get offended at that. You know, they get offended at the truth. They get offended at what comes with it. And they want to cast this truth away from them. Now they don't want to be a Hebrew Israelite anymore. Now they don't want to follow behind Yahweh Shai anymore. Because the things that are required to do it, you know, he... he He's not willing to do that. All right, it says, for wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many, man. Yeah, only manifest to the elect. Lord willing, we be a part of that elect number. 
You see? But the elect, one thing for sure, will not be offended in the Lord, nor in this walk. So, Lord willing's view is that if I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Shai, Bashim, Kaku, Dash, the honors to the apostles, the elders, great Muslims, and the world, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball.